just been moving the horses' fences. See, they're grazing in the fresh bit of um, pasture that I fenced off for them. You can see the electric fence. They were up there where all those thistles were. That's somewhere where I overwintered them two years ago, I think, or three years ago, because I needed to manure it really well. So by next year, a lot of those thistles will be gone because the grasses and everything will be better. There's a copper birch tree. Anyway, I was walking along looking at uh, the um, manure, seeing if there were any dung beetles. And, oh, he's gone now. I'm talking so much, he's gone. Oh, there he is. You can see the spider where my thumb is, living in manure. You can see just where my thumb is, you can see his, there you go, look at that. He's living in the dung. Can you see him? And so that's another animal that lives and uses manure. Whoops, there he goes. There you can see him. So he's probably laid a nest. He's probably eaten all the dung beetle mites and things like that that would have been in this pile of dung. I don't know what kind of spider it is, but obviously it's one that lives in dung and needs dung to make a living and survive and reproduce. You can see this is old and dry. I'm going to close it up, put the him in there, but there's no evidence of dung oh, there's a little bit of evidence. Those holes there, that's evidence of dung beetles. That's evidence of dung beetles. But there's no huge amount of evidence of dung beetles on this pile of manure. So I was curious as to why. And it might be due to that spider could be having, making a living off of the dung beetle larvae or the dung beetles or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. I've got my cohort of three ladies, those two, and you, isn't that right? So the grass is lovely and green here. The horses were away from here. We're supposedly in a drought, yet my grass is coming back beautifully, going all the way over here. This is, the horses were here a week ago or so. And this is the only fertilizer on this. You can see the clovers all coming up. You can see there's clovers, white clovers, and there's some other herbs in there. So it's coming back. And the further I walk back this direction, the greener and richer the grass is. We're in a drought and there's been no fertilizer on this and no rain except occasional dewfall. And you can see the very fertile patches where manure was or where a horse peed. That could be where a horse peed or it could be where a pile of manure was. There, you can see those, you can see those spots there, manure or pee are all those dark spots of fertility. Here's some hawksweed. It's flowering now. So the further back in time I go from when the horses were grazing here, the more diversity there is. You can see there's several different grasses. And Yes, there are thistles, but there are a lot less than there used to be. So keep going backwards. More hawksweed. There's more hawksweed. More of the little daisies. White clover. There's That's a buttercup. There's hardly any buttercup on the farm here. Usually when you see loads of buttercup, that means the pasture is tired and has been overproducing. There's some purple clover. You can see there's some purple clover. There's a bit of leftover manure that was very well um, 
eaten by the dung beetle. You can see all the holes from the small dung beetles. So this is all the way back here. And you can see there's dandelions, clover, a daisy, that's yarrow there. So all of these, given a few more days and a bit more time, and this splash of rain that's coming, this will all get, will, it'll take off. This pasture will really, really take off. But this was grazed to the nub by the horses and we've not had any rain, no fertilizer. This is how you regenerate fields and pastures. You give them rest time. And uh, I'm very pleased with this turn up of grass. Looks really, really good. That is if you're a horse. So I think that's really good. I'm very pleased with those results. I left this log down. This was a beautiful uh, pink horse chestnut. Uh, that was that's been dead now a number of years and we chopped it into a bench but I'm now letting it just rot down into the ground so the area around it you can see the grass is very rich and thick so it's really liking it so very pleased with how this field is turning